Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet. Remove the terminal block cover. For safety, please use a set of alligator clips on your multimeter test probes. Connect the black test probe to L1 terminal on the left and connect the red test probe to L2 terminal on the right. Set the multimeter to read higher than 250 volts AC. Put the multimeter on a wooden chair or small table away from the dryer. Connect the dryer to the wall outlet. Take a look at the readings without touching the dryer. This will minimize the chances of you getting an electrical shock. The reading should be about 240 volts AC. Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet. Move the red test probe to the neutral terminal in the middle. Connect the dryer to the wall outlet. The reading should be about 120 volts AC. Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet. Connect the black test probe to the neutral terminal on the middle and the red test probe to the L2 terminal on the right. Connect the dryer to the wall outlet. The reading should be about 120 volts AC. Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet. This reading should be about 240 volts. This one should be about 120 volts. And this one should be about 120 volts. If any of these three readings is not right, the problem is on the house electrical supply. It could be a blown fuse, a trip circle breaker, or the outlet itself. If the voltages are okay, just install the terminal block cover and go to the next test. Make sure that the dryer is disconnected from the wall outlet. Remove the back panel. Let's check the thermal fuse for continuity. Remove one of the blue wires from the thermal fuse. Set your multimeter to check ohms. Take a reading between the two terminals on the thermal fuse. The reading should be zero ohms. If the reading is infinity, you will need to replace the thermal fuse and the cycling thermostat. The main reason that the thermal fuse blows is because the cycling thermostat is not opening at the preset temperature of 155 degrees. So if you only replace the thermal fuse, it's going to blow again. So you need to replace them both, thermal fuse and cycling thermostat. To replace a bad thermal fuse, remove the other wire. Remove the holding screw and remove the bad thermal fuse. Install the new thermal fuse. Install the holding screw and install the two wires. Doesn't matter which one goes where. To replace the cycling thermostat, remove the holding screw. Remove the thermostat but don't remove any of the wires. Install the new cycling thermostat and the holding screw. Transfer the wires from the old thermostat to the new thermostat one by one. Install the back panel and the terminal block cover and you're done replacing the thermal fuse and cycling thermostat. Let me show you how to check and replace the older style dryer door switch. This is the way that a good door switch plunger should look like. If when you open the door, the plunger is missing, the door switch is broken and you will need to replace it. Make sure that your electric or gas dryer is disconnected from the wall outlet. 
before you can remove the top panel, you have to lift the filter cover and remove the two holding screws. To open the top panel, place a spatula between the front and the top panel, pry it up to unhook the top panel from the holding clips. Take a piece of coat hanger wire and measure from the front of the drum to the back and bend the two ends of the wire like this. Use the wire to hold the drum in place while you remove the two front panel holding screws. Remove the two front panel holding screws and move the front panel forward so you have space to work on the door switch. Set your multimeter to read ohms. Remove the white and the blue wires from the switch. Take your reading with your ohm meter between the two terminals on the door switch. With the dry door closed, the reading should be zero ohms. If the reading is infinity, the door switch is bad and you will need to replace it. To replace the switch, open the door and remove the holding screws. Take the switch out, but don't remove the wires. Transfer the wires one by one from the old switch to the new one. Connect the plunger or switch actuator to the switch. Put the switch in place and screw in the two holding screws. Press on the switch plunger to make sure that the switch click on and off. Bring the front panel forward, make sure that the drum is set properly, and screw in the two holding screws. Remove the coat hanger wire, lower the top panel, press on it to snap it in place. Lift the filter cover and install the two holding screws. And that was the way you check and replace the door switch on an older style dryer. Disconnect the dryer from the wall outlet. This is the way that the plunger should look on a good switch. If the plunger look like this, it means that the plunger is broken and the switch must be replaced. To check the switch for continuity, you need to lift the top panel. To lift the top panel, you will need to remove the filter and remove the two top panel holding screws. Use a piece of rag to cover the hole that you remove the filter from. This will prevent any screws or tools to fall into the blower. Remove the two top panel holding screws. Use a spatula like this to release the top panel from the holding clips. Then lift the panel and lean it against the wall. Use the corner of the spatula like this to disconnect the door switch wire harness. Set your multimeter to read ohms. Take a reading between the two outside terminals on the door switch connecting block. With the dry door closed, the reading should be zero ohms. If the reading is infinity, the door switch is bad and you will need to replace it. To replace the door switch, you will need to remove the two door switch holding screws. Next, you will need to disconnect the door switch connecting block using the corner of the spatula like this. With a pair of needle nose pliers, squeeze this plastic retainer and pull the switch right out. Grab the new switch and plug it into the wire harness. Connect the retainer right through the hole and align the switch to put the screws on it. Screw in the door switch holding screws. Lower the top panel and push down on it until it snaps in place. Screw in the two top panel holding screws. 
remove the rag and install the filter. That's all it takes to test and replace the door switch. Let me show you how to test the relay operated push to start switch. If you press down the push to start switch and the dryer won't do anything, the dryer could have a bad push to start switch. If you press down the push to start switch and the dryer runs, but when you release the switch the dryer stops running, the relay in the push to start switch could be burnt and we're going to show you how to check it out. Disconnect your electric or gas dryer from the wall outlet. Remove the controls back panel. Locate the relay operated push to start switch. Set your multimeter to read ohms. Remove the pink wire from the CT1 terminal on the switch. Take a reading between the terminals CT1 and R2 on the switch. The reading should be between 1000 and 3000 ohms. If the reading is infinity, the switch is bad and you will need to replace it. Put the wire back on the CT1 terminal and remove the wire from the R1 terminal. Press and hold down the push to start button. Take a reading between the terminals marked R1 and R2 on the switch. The reading should be 0 ohms. If the reading is infinity, the switch is bad and you will need to replace it. To replace the switch, grab the new switch and transfer the wires from the bad switch to the new switch. Move the new switch aside. Remove the knob from the bad switch. Remove the two holding screws on the bad switch and remove the switch. Set the new switch in place and screw in the two holding screws. Install the knob on the new switch. Install the control back panel and you're done checking and replacing the relay operated push to start switch. If you press down the push to start button and the dryer won't start, you might have a bad push to start switch. If you press down the push to start button and the dryer starts running, and when you let go of the button the dryer stops, you might have a bad motor centrifugal switch. Let me show you how to check the newer style push to start switch. Make sure to disconnect your electric or gas dryer from the wall outlet. Remove the controls back panel. Locate the push to start switch. Set your multimeter to read ohms. Remove one of the wires from the switch. Press down and hold the push to start button. Take a reading between the two terminals on the switch. The reading should be zero ohms. If the reading is infinity the switch is bad and you will need to replace it. To replace the switch, remove the two wires, then remove the knob. Use a flat screwdriver to bend the holding tab out a little bit, then turn the switch counterclockwise and take it right out. Set the new switch with the holding tab about 10 o'clock. Then turn the switch clockwise until it snaps in place. Connect the two wires to the switch. It doesn't matter if you put them this way or this way. Install the knob on the new switch. Then install the controls back panel. That's all it takes to check and replace the new style push to start switch. If you press down the push to start switch and the dryer won't start, you could have a bad push to start switch. If you press down the push to start switch and the dryer starts running, and when you let go of the switch the dryer stops, you could have a bad motor centrifugal switch. Make sure that your electric or gas dryer are disconnected from the wall outlet. Remove the controls back panel. Locate the push to start switch. Set your multimeter to read ohms. 
Disconnect one of the wires from the push to start switch. Press and hold down the push to start button. Take a reading between the two terminals on the push to start switch. The reading should be 0 ohms. If the reading is infinity, the switch is bad and you will need to replace it. To replace the switch, remove the knob. Disconnect the wires from the switch and remove the holding screws. Then remove the switch. Install the new switch and the holding screws. Then connect the two wires to the switch. Install the knob, the controls back panel, and you're done checking and replacing the push to start switch. Let me show you a contact to check in the timer when the dryer won't start. Disconnect your electric or gas dryer from the wall outlet. Remove the controls back panel. Set the timer dial on the auto dry, timed dry, or air dry. Set your multimeter to read ohms. Find the blue, black, and red wires and disconnect the blue one. Take a reading between the terminal that you remove the blue wire from, marked BU, and the terminal with the black wire, marked BK. The reading should be 0 ohms. If the reading is infinity, the timer is bad and you will need to replace it. How to check the timer motor. Move the wires out of the way so you can see better. Disconnect one of the timer motor wires from the timer. Take a reading from the timer motor wire that's still connected to the timer and the wire you disconnected. The reading should be between 2 and 3,000 ohms. If the reading is infinity, the timer motor is bad. If the timer motor checks OK, install the wire back. If the timer motor is bad, it will be better to replace the complete timer assembly. How to replace the timer? Remove the timer knob by grabbing it and pulling it straight out. Remove the timer holding screws and take the timer right out. Leave all the wires connected to the timer. Set the new timer in place and screw in the two holding screws. Transfer the wires one by one from the bad timer to the new timer. This way you are going to be sure that you install the wires on the right terminals. Install the timer knob and install the controls back panel. That was a way to check the timer when the dryer is not starting. This is a live test. Please follow my instructions to avoid any electrical shock. Disconnect your electric or gas dryer from the wall outlet before proceeding. According to the wiring schematic, you will need to apply 120 volts to terminals 4M and 5M to run the motor direct. If you follow the wire from 5M, you see that it finishes on the push to start switch. If you follow the wire from 4M, it passes through the thermal fuse all the way to the timer. Those are the two points you need to intercept to run the motor direct. Remove the control back panel to gain access to the timer and the push to start switch. You will need to apply 120 volts between the blue wire on the timer and the white wire with a red stripe on the push to start switch. To do the test, you will need a homemade test cord. Get a 12 feet long extension cord. Cut the end with the outlet on it. Strip the two wires and solder two insulated alligator clips on it. 
connect one of the alligator clips to the blue wire on the timer and the other alligator clip to the white and red wire on the push to start switch. Open the dryer door so you can see if the motor runs or not. Connect the test cord to the wall outlet and stay away from the dryer. Don't touch the dryer. Just let it run. Let the dryer run for at least half an hour. If the motor runs for a little bit, then it stops. If the motor hums, but it won't start. If the motor smokes or smells like rubber burning, the motor is bad and it must be replaced. That was how you test the motor without removing it from the dryer. Make sure that your electric or gas dryer is disconnected from the wall outlet. Remove the back panel. If you have a gas dryer with flexible pipes and you can move the dryer away from the wall without disconnecting the gas pipes, you should be able to use this technique to break off the blower wheel from the motor. Do not disconnect any lines on your gas dryer. You need to be licensed to connect or disconnect any gas appliances. Call a plumber, see how much he charge you to come and disconnect the dryer so you can work on it and then come back later on and reinstall it. That's the way to do it. Or call an appliance company to do the repair. Remove the four blower cover holding screws. Pick up the blower cover and put it to the side. When you can't remove the blower the regular way, the only other option is to break the blower and replace it with a new one. Let me show you how to break off the blower from the motor when you can't get it out the regular way. Draw a circle on the blower like this. Use a drill with a new drill bit or a Dremor tool like this one and cut the blower from the motor. Now you could just pick up the blower and take it right out. Cut like an X on the part of the blower that is left on the motor shaft, like this. Use a hammer and a chisel or a hammer and a screwdriver and start chipping away the plastic pieces from the motor shaft until the motor shaft fits through the hole on the blower housing so you can take the motor out. When you finish chipping away the plastic pieces from the blower, the motor shaft will look like this. You're going to have the insert that the motor screws into. Now you can finish removing the motor. Make sure that your electric or gas dryer is disconnected from the wall outlet before proceeding. You should know how to take the dryer apart by now. If you don't, view the video clip on how to take the dryer apart first. Remove the ground wire from the motor frame. Remove the rear motor clamp. Use a 3 quarter inch open wrench to hold the blower wheel in place. Use a 716 open wrench to break loose the blower wheel by turning the motor shaft clockwise. Continue turning the motor shaft clockwise until the blower wheel is off the motor shaft. Remove the front motor clamp.
Remove the bad motor, but leave the wires attached to the bad motor. Grab the new motor, stick the shaft on the blower hole, and set the motor in place. Turn the motor shaft counterclockwise to screw in the blower. If the blower won't screw in, use a screwdriver to move the blower forward, then turn the motor shaft counterclockwise until the blower is screwed all the way in. Remove the red wire from terminal 1, the black wire from terminal 6, the white wire from terminal 5, the blue wire from terminal 4, and the red wire from terminal 2 on the motor switch. Find the black wire mark 6M and the white wire mark 5M and cut the quarter of an inch terminals off. Strip the ends of the wires and crimp the 1 8 of an inch terminal supplied with the motor to the white and black wires. You will need to remove the blue wire from terminal 4 on the motor switch and from the overload protector and discard it. Connect the blue wire marked 4M to the terminal on the overload protector. These numbers correspond to the numbers printed on the wires. Connect the red wire 1M to terminal 1, the white wire 5M to terminal 5, the black wire 6M to terminal 6, the red wire 2M to terminal 2. That is the way that the wires connect to the new motor. Grab the motor, lift it a little bit, and turn it counterclockwise until the motor falls in place. The location of the motor switch should be about 7 o'clock, like this. To install the front motor clamp, set it in place, hold it down with the screwdriver, hit the top of the screwdriver with the hammer to drive the clamp down and snap it in place. If you don't have a 3 quarter of an inch open wrench, you could use an adjustable wrench. Make sure the wrench is open at 3 quarters of an inch before using it. Use the adjustable wrench to hold the blower in place. Use a 716 open wrench to turn the motor shaft counterclockwise to tighten the blower. To install the rear motor clamp, set it in place. Push it down with the screwdriver. Hit the screwdriver to push down the clamp and snap it in place. Use some electrical tape to keep all the wires together. That was the way to replace an old style motor with a new style motor. Make sure that your electric or gas dryer is disconnected from the wall outlet before proceeding. With the dryer taken apart up to this point, let me show you how to replace a bad motor. This is how you remove the motor clamp on the rear. And this is how you remove the motor clamp on the front. Now that you know how to do it, let's start by removing the motor clamp on the rear. You will need a 3 quarter of an inch open wrench for the blower and a 7 16 open wrench for the motor shaft. Use a 3 quarter inch open wrench to hold the blower in place and the 716 open wrench to break loose the blower wheel from the motor shaft by turning it clockwise. Then keep turning the motor shaft clockwise until the blower is off the motor shaft. When the blower is off the motor shaft, remove the 3 quarter inch open wrench. If you can't get the blower wheel off the motor shaft, Check the video clip on how to break off the blower from the motor shaft. Remove the motor clamp on the front. Grab the motor and turn it clockwise a little bit 
to make it easier to remove the motor wire harness. Use a flat screwdriver to undo the holding clips on the motor wire harness, then remove the wire harness. Grab the bad motor, wiggle it a little bit, and take it right out. Grab the new motor, stick the motor shaft into the blower hole, and set it in place. Connect the wire harness to the new motor and make sure to push it all the way in until the clip snaps in place. Turn the motor counterclockwise until the motor wire harness is located about 7 o'clock. Turn the motor shaft counterclockwise until the blower is screwed in. Use the 3 quarter inch open wrench to hold the blower in place and the 716 open wrench to screw in the motor shaft tight into the blower. Set the front motor clamp in place and use a screwdriver and a hammer to snap it in place. Set the rear motor clamp in place and use the flat screwdriver and the hammer to snap it in place. Put the driver back together and that's all it takes to replace a bad motor.